everything you've learned about light is useful only if you can do something with the light. The most common thing to do with light is to create images. Humans and animals do this with their eyes. Cameras do it for photography, videography, and machine vision. This video explores the basics of how images are created. The videos following this one go into more detail on limitations of the optical images created. In this video, you will cover operation of a pinhole camera, ray tracing through a simple lens, ray tracing through a lens, the important location for a thin lens, how the locations change for a thick lens, basic imaging equations, magnification, image and object distance, and the Gaussian lens equation and useful variations, and finally, the F number. We're out here with an old-fashioned camera that's a view camera because behind it it has a ground glass screen where we can see the image. I'll be taking an image of the tree behind us. Notice that the image is upside down. This is normal. Imaging lenses produce an upside-down image unless extra optical elements are included to reinvert the image. That's not necessary because the film or image sensor is put in upside down. I'm going to take out the lens and put in its place a piece of plastic with a very small hole drilled in the middle. Even without the lens, the camera shows an image. The image is dim because the pinhole admits very little light. The image is also blurry because rays from a point in the scene form a cone that falls on the ground glass. Here is a diagram of the pinhole camera we created. We can trace rays from the scene through the pinhole to corresponding locations on the image. So what are the drawbacks to using a pinhole to create an image for our camera? First, the pinhole is small. It does not gather much light energy. The image is very dim. Second, the pinhole does not produce a sharp image. We would like to have a sharper image that provides more detail of the scene. A lens allows us to overcome both of these drawbacks. We will start by looking at how light travels through a lens. A lens is a single curved glass surface. Our study starts with a plane wave of light. We will use rays to show the direction the light waves travel. Notice as the rays reach the surface of the lens, they are refracted. The amount of refraction depends on the angle of the surface and the index of refraction of the lens material. Also notice that the light rays all converge to a point. That is, the rays are brought to a focus. Since this focus is inside the lens, it is not very useful. To make our device more useful, let's have two curved surfaces as shown. This makes the lens singular into a lens, plural. Now when the parallel rays pass through the lens, they still converge to a focus. If the lens is thin enough, we can model it as if it were a single plane with the light rays bending about this plane. This is the thin lens model. The imaginary plane where the light rays appear to bend is called the principal plane. Real lenses are rarely thin enough to be modeled as having a single principal plane. They function as if they have two principal planes, a front and a rear principal plane. Still, the thin lens model is useful for modeling basic imaging, and we will make use of this model for the rest of this video. Shown here is a diagram of an object and a thin lens. Let's trace rays from the top of the object through the lens to see where they go. First, we will trace the ray that goes through the center of the lens. This is called the chief ray. 
the rays that go through the edge of the lens are called marginal rays. The convergence of the rays shows where our image appears. There are some important dimensions we will use to create useful formulas to describe the image formation. First, we have the object height, denoted h sub o. Correspondingly, we have the image height, denoted by h sub i. We have the object distance from the object to the lens principal plane, denoted by d sub o. And corresponding to that, we have the image distance, denoted by d sub i. Finally, we notice that the marginal rays cross the optical axis in front and behind the lens. We also notice that the distances of these crossings, front and back, are the same. This distance is the focal length of the lens, denoted by lowercase f. Now we examine some useful formulas for lenses. First is the definition of magnification. We will talk about the image magnification, denoted m sub i. It is simply the ratio of the image height to the object height. Some people have come to call this the primary magnification, spelled P-M-A-G and pronounced P-Mag. If we look at the illustration, we can see two similar triangles. We know that the ratios of the sides of similar triangles are equal. Therefore, the ratio of the image distance to the object distance equals the ratio of the image height to the object height, which equals our magnification. We will give ourselves a break from too much math and accept the Gaussian lens formula as shown. Combining the Gaussian lens formula with the equation for magnification, we come up with several useful formulas. You don't need to memorize these formulas. They are readily available either on the web or from the optics paper identified at the end of this video. Notice as the object's distance changes, the image distance must also change to maintain the object in focus. An important characteristic of the lens is the F number, denoted by capital F together with the hash or pound sign. It is an indication of how much light energy the lens can gather and provide to the image. The F number is the focal length of the lens divided by its diameter. Notice that the F number is counterintuitive. Larger F numbers let in less light than smaller F numbers. The actual light gathering power of a lens is its effective F number denoted F, the hash sign, and the subscript EFF. It is the image distance of the lens divided by the lens's diameter. It is also the F number times the quantity 1 plus the magnification. Now you know the basic properties of a lens. How a lens forms an image, the difference between a thin lens, which is theoretical, and a thick lens. The important distances in imaging, the focal distance, the object distance, and the image distance. Two ways to calculate magnification. Some basic equations that you can use to help you design imaging. And about the F number and the effective F number. You are ready to build on your knowledge with the next video that delves deeper into how lenses work in practice. For more information on light, as well as many other related topics that you will find useful in your work in machine vision, download the paper Optics for Machine Vision Practitioners at the URL shown here.